Hey there, Internet. So I'm, today I'm going to try to make a double-sided PCB. Uh, it's essentially just an RJ45 breakout board. Here's my PCB design. And um, one thing I just picked up on, I had some issues before. Um, the origin in Fusion 360 is this little uh, sign here. And if you, if you don't pick up on that, you're going to... You're, you're going to have your origin land in weird places. So you should definitely make sure that if you're going to use this spot as your origin, um, you make sure that, uh, for instance, you're not like that or like that. You want to have that right on the origin. Um, super important. So anyway, so uh, here in the flat cam beta, this is 8.9.8. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag in some files. I'll go ahead and start with the Exelon. And then I'm going to drag in the copper top, copper bottom, and the profile. The next step is going to be to copy the profile and to copy the drill file. So you'll see why I do that in a second. So then the next thing you do is you go ahead and you open up the double-sided PCP tool. I'm going to flip it in the X and I'm going to use this uh, reference point, which is going to be the origin zero zero. And my alignment drill locations um, are based on a, 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 uh, a layout that I made. And the alignment drills aren't going to go all the way through. Uh, the idea here is that I can continue to use the same um, flip jig with the same hole locations. So my first hole is going to be 3-3. Three, three. Let me just check that real quick. So this is... Uh, three and three, that's right. And these are spaced 22 millimeters apart. So I want to have my first hole be three, three. And my hole diameter should be four. So then you go ahead and you can create your Exelon object. And just make sure that that looks correct. Uh, we'll, we'll cross our fingers. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, grab the copy of the profile and mirror that. And then I want to mirror the copper bottom, which doesn't need a copy. And then I want to mirror the copy of the drill file. So that should give me uh, everything that I need to continue. So uh, I can go ahead and combine all these Exelon files into a single file. And I want to use a helical. So I'll go ahead and select the mill, ge uh, generate mill geometry. This will do a helical with my eight millimeter cutter. And then I just go ahead and set my Z value, minus 1.6, multi-depth, 0.4, generate, and save. And I'm gonna make a new folder here. Two. So I'll call this Operation One Drill Holes. All right, so the next thing I want to do is uh, create, make sure I have this set right. I want to combine the traces. And add my tool here. 
0.2 millimeter toll. And that all looks correct. Looks good. So we'll call this uh, two traces. And finally, I, I, I've tried to figure out a way to combine these, but it doesn't seem to work. Um, whoops. So I want to go ahead to use the cutout tool. Generate rectangular ge geometry. Select my Z. 4, generate. We'll save this as top cutout. And this is the part that doesn't really seem to work. I don't know why. But if I go in here and launch the cutout tool again, rectangular geometry, it it, it doesn't use the mirror geometry. I, I really don't understand why that is. Um, so I'm not going to bother to save this. I'll have to manually cut the other side out. Um, but that's essentially uh, what you should be able to do. So you'll, you'll, you'll drill, cut the traces, and flip it. And this side will go up here and this side will go down here and uh, you recut the traces, you don't have to drill again, and you should have a mirrored board. So here's the result. Um, you can definitely see the layer, the step downs, and that's a 22 inch bearing. That's a real good fit. So that that checks out. I think that's usable. So the idea here is I can probe the center of this of a bearing in here, which is of a known position and a known diameter and then if I did this right it's a bit it's a little tight if I did this right I can also clamp one in here this one it seems like the radius is right I can also clamp one in here with something on the outside and um, I guess what I haven't really figured out is how to make sure I get good electrical contact to the bearing. Because uh, connecting to the outer race may not be the best idea. I, I can always make something that's 22 millimeters that doesn't have a, the actual balls in it. But the nice thing about a bearing is it's known, you know, it's high precision ground. Um, these two, these two are going to be my clamp downs. So here's the here's the sub spindle assembly. Uh, it has not been trammed. Let me pan up. Zoom out just a touch. So I've got um, this motor, which is pretty high speed. I think this will do 22,000 RPMs, and then I got it step down. Um, I think I was clocking this right around 20,000 RPMs for that last test, and then I uh, I made these 40 millimeter half clamps out of aluminum and then uh, this is a piece of eight millimeter steel which is bolted to the to the um, the headstock 
and then uh, I just have two M6 clamps that, that are com compressing this together. So it seems to be working really well. There was no vibration anywhere in the machine as it was cutting. I mean, it was just silky smooth. So from the vibration perspective, I think it was doing a great job. Load the traces. Okay. Alright, we'll try it again. Here we go. Okay, so now I think I need to set my Z height here, I guess. So I'll do that. And uh, check the camera. Cycle start. Alright, my probing macro obviously was a terrible failure. We're going to try this again with the finger on the cancellation button. Crack my spin on it. Crash. Start. It looks really good. Oh, it comes through there. So there's n there's no burrs. The uh, depth seems really spot on. Um, there's no burrs on the traces. The, that that point eight millimeter bit does create some burrs. Um, my uh, my text and for this this right here this number one didn't quite make it through the PCB, but all the important traces did. So that's good, and I think I can even save this pin here. So the next thing will be to go ahead and flip it with the reference holes and um, do the other side. Okay, so my tolerances pretty crap. <laughs> now hopefully this and this are perpendicular and they're also parallel with these lines. I should be able to use a square but uh, that's kind of unacceptable. I, uh, I should have put another hole in here. I, for some reason I, I didn't think to because of the size of the board that was being cut out but I actually had room to do it so that was kind of a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't use the square to get it lined up and then super glued down. Okay, so I just tried to tape that. I don't know what happened. Did I not hit the button? Anyway, so I've, I've, I've got it square and aligned. I, I, I don't know if I can use the same heat height map, but I'm going to try to. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut the traces and see if they line up. So, we're ready to run the program. Cycle like start.
So here's what it looks like, some small burrs on the edges which is to be expected with that cutter, pretty easy to clean up. There's also small burrs around the cut, these uh, drill holes, Just gently. Take those off. This side, pretty much the same thing. I don't know if this is in, this is in focus, probably not. But it looks like all the holes came out in the right places. How well is that showing up in the camera? Yeah, I think that's a win. Everything looks real good.